For me, the awakening journey is one of returning back home to oneself. And it's been a lifetime journey. It's been a journey of forgetting and realizing that something was being lost along the way, even when I was young, and then wanting it back and uh, wanting that feeling of wholeness back. Finding my way back home to myself has been really my life story. One I've enjoyed tremendously. And I spent a lot of time um, deep in meditation in my 20s. Eventually, in my early 30s, that led to an awakening into emptiness, what I call emptiness, and where everything that I had taken to be true was wanting to be seen through, including language. All the things that I had turned into an object through my being, being trained to see life as something separate from myself, I, um, that, that, that duality began to collapse, that subject-object duality began to collapse. And it revealed a, a really beautiful, pristine emptiness that I stayed in for a couple of years um, and learned how to deepen in. That to me was like the tide going out of the sea and revealing the starkness of the pristine reality of, of, of everything being empty at its core, including myself, everything outside of myself, and everything within. And then from there, the tide came back in and it came in and it, and it filled up all the space. And that's when um, unity came in, the, the understanding that everything is one. And uh, it was so organic. I, um, I had very little direction uh, pointers at the time. This was all a, a process that was happening uh, naturally. I had built a lot of trust up over time to let myself open to letting go. Because really to me, awakening is one of letting go, learning how to surrender to a process that is happening intelligently because life really wants us to be in alignment, inner alignment with ourselves. Unity took some time to uh, become embodied so my awakening journey included deep embodiment. What I mean by that is that love, really, unity is, is, is an experience of the heart opening and opening to, to uh, embracing all aspects of itself. So with emptiness, there's this feeling that nothing is true, nothing is real, nothing is myself in essence. Everything that I take be, to be true is not the truth in itself. It's my overlay. It was an overlay of consciousness onto it. And so then um, with unity, what came in is that everything is that. Everything is God. Everything, every feeling, every sensation, everything in creation is that. And so that was a deep, deep understanding that that took time and I, I steeped in that for almost 10 years. And then another opening had take place and I call that the no self, but it's not my term. It's a term that um, Bernadette Roberts and, and also Adyashanti has spoken about. It's something that's not known as, as much and in, in, um, not spoken as much about. And that is yet another opening that I really wasn't looking for because, to be honest, unity is a wonderful, wonderful um, land, uh, no landing place. <laughs> you could just be rest in unity, especially as it deepens. Unity becomes more and more and more textured and layered and deeper over time. And with the no self, what took place is that there was no more ability to reflect whatsoever on any experience not even on being in unity. Any one that was able to reflect on having an experience, even if it was so stable and so integrated, 
you don't feel like it's there anymore but there's still without knowing it there's still someone there that's able to see that unity is there that went away and that was a whole nother landscape that opened up 